here we are back in nip country this is probably the video you've wanted to see fundamentals number four welding so probably asking yourself if you saw the previous video about uh, grinding and whatnot hey how come that's silver and not gold like the one that you did the last time was you promised you were gonna hold those off and save them for this well I did but uh, this is the second time filming this because for some reason when I imported the video the audio and the video were in different places and I couldn't make them be friends again so I'm gonna refilm this had to cut up new bits because well I welded the other ones Let's see I even made a marvelous mistake as a teaching moment but hey you win some, you lose some. So, first things first, let me introduce you to the welder I use. So, hold on a second, let me uh, switch the phone around a little bit. This is going to be a little weird, so bear with me. Creak. Creak. A little fart noise. Okay, so. Do, 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 do. Moving into position, perhaps. Poor lighting? Yes, poor lighting. Let's turn that one off, shall we? Okay, so, in the darkness. Dun, 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 dun. We have a uh, Orion Welders Pulse Impulse 30. Uh, it's a, as I said, pulse arc, which basically means you've got a tungsten electrode down here at the bottom. It's also set up to run argon, which I'm currently not doing. Um, it has a microscope up here, which gives you about 5x magnification, which is, for me at least, perfect. One thing to note about welding with pulse arcs. This little guy basically fires a cone of electrical energy perpendicular to that needle. The needle should always be pretty sharp. This is a... Uh, half millimeter electrode, which means the, the spot size is pretty powerful and pretty small. I usually use the one millimeters, but hey, this is what's in here, so that's what we're going to use. I'm going to give you an example of a weld, so you see what they look like and how this operates. And I'll use the piece I used when I filmed this the first time. So, let's do this. Do, 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 do. Alligator clip for the other part of the electricity. So what you want to try and do, at least with a machine like this, is get the piece you're welding and that needle as close to perpendicular as possible most of the time. There's always a caveat. So I'm using the seven watts a second setting, which is a little lower than I usually do, but that, well, that electrode is small and uh, it was pretty sharp. And I'm just welding a couple because. So the reason you were hearing a lot of clickies but no zappies is if it's not making perfect angle or there's an air gap between the pieces of metal, it's not going to weld properly. So, teachable moment. Also, um, if the needle gets dirty or the piece gets dirty, which is normally why you'd want to run argon is to keep things cleaner, it's not going to weld all that well. And if this were, you know, gold or a precious metal, I'd be more concerned, but it's steel, and that's not as huge an issue, at least in my happy little world. Uh, that's a nice little weld. So I don't know if you can see this one on the end there, but it's this cute little circle. And uh, that's kind of really what you want out of this. So let's continue into welding the actual nib parts. So you've got sliver number one, sliver number two. 
because I wasn't asking anybody when I was learning about this, I didn't find out that you really ought to shim things to keep them lined up. But um, I found out pretty quick once I started making these that holding them with your fingers and expecting them to stay in the same place is a little unreasonable. So since you've got it shimmed, you have a chance to really alter and customize the angle of where those tipping areas are in relationship to each other because that's going to control the angles that the nib is going to write at in a, the most optimal way or it really just varies on how you want it to write but we'll get into that eventually and you want as little an air gap as possible I mentioned in the tools video you probably want to have something like small needle nose pliers to adjust things ever so slightly in your favor because hey if you can put your finger on the wheel of success and help yourself out you might as well do it yeah so this particular shim is titanium it's about tenth of a millimeter thick you can also use brass I like titanium um, because it doesn't like to weld and that's useful so what I want to do is at the tip of the slivered section I want to put a weld in and the reason for that is you need something to keep it stable while you do everything else and if you don't do that it's going to wobble all over the place it'll come out of alignment and generally you'll go a little crazy so let's do that everything's still where i want it yeah Now because there's an air gap, what's happening here is it's melting that top layer but not welding anything. See, there we go. So we've got a weld there now. And then this is where you have to make a choice. You need more welds to keep this stable and from the two pieces flapping apart. You can get something nice and sharp. You can weld all the way around the perimeter of the slivered section, or you can tack weld certain areas, then decide what to do. Even if you only put three or four welds on this, it's not coming apart. People have asked me, well, you know, how strong are those welds? I have to cut these things apart if I want to try and reuse anything. And a lot of the time, by the time I'm finished grinding and cutting through, everything's a mess and nothing is usable. There's no way to recycle. That's another reason to use up a lot of Gen Hao nibs before you get into buying anything else. So, let's see. I think I'm going to put a weld in up by the wings and get those tacked down. So... Nice little weld. Keeping things perpendicular is a bit of a challenge. When you're working at a distance. Okay, that might be enough to hold, it might not be. Alright, 
That's actually not bad. It's holding. Now I get some other decisions. Because for the moment, the top nib section is in place, it's not going to go anywhere. I like having this little overhang, but some people don't. What you can do, if you want to grind off the overhang so everything is flush, you can weld right along the sides here. And if you look at some of Nagahara's stuff, you'll notice that it looks almost solid along there. Okay, you can do that. My style is a little different. I prefer to, to do a lot of my welding out here, but I will adjust in the overhang areas to keep things as tight as I want them to be. So if you really wanted to do nothing at this point, this nib is not going to come apart. It's going to be a little flexy. You could grind this, it would just drive you crazy. But since we've got tack welds in, we might as well put some more. Since I've got you here and you're a, you know, you're going to watch until you stop watching. What you just heard, or maybe didn't hear, is another argument for using argon, which is the electrode itself will sometimes stick to the weld, which it doesn't really do when you're running argon. The reason I don't is you don't get a lot of economy out of argon canisters. And it's kind of annoying. every time you weld, you use up argon. And a 20 pound tank will maybe give you 20 minutes of use. That's really annoying when you've got to go back and forth to your welding supply shop to get refills. And they're only open from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays. I'm breaking my perpendicular rule because of how I want it welded. Okay. Normally I use about 9 watts a second, which is a bit hotter than this, because I like the weld. But, you know, from a neatness standpoint, the lower you can get the weld temperature or weld power, the cleaner things are going to be, as far as I've seen. Um, Professional weld people may tell you differently, and I would defer to them. A welder like this is going to give you about half a millimeter to a millimeter and a half weld spot, which is not big. Hee <laughs> hee! Sparks. multi-pass. Okay, so that's about enough in the way of welding. Right, so small weld spot, which is why people use these for semiconductor work and jewelry and things like that. Personally, I don't like them for jewelry because you've got to run argon for it to really work well. So there are your welds. I went sporadically up and down this side. What you can do from this point is decide how you're going to finish it. I've been in a place where I've tried to smooth it down into the lower nib as much as possible, and sometimes I leave it polished, but very clear that it's been welded. That's personal preference. That's, that's your artistic expression. Go for it. 
but um, this is the, the down and dirty welding episode. Next thing we're going to do is point grinding, some finishing and some polishing, and then we're going to get up to a point where we're going to test this and make sure I'm not crazy. So, thanks for watching. Support your local pen people, your nib grinders, your nib meisters, your pen makers, uh, your nib Frankenstein people. And, uh, subscribe, like the video, make some comments, and I will get back to you soon.